over there if you want to grab another bite. It's going to come fast. I gotta tell you, I'm impressed with how well that chain's still cutting. Yeah. How much metal you've hit with it today? Well, that's the thing, is I hit a nail with it last week, too. Toes. I broke I broke a big toad. Not paying close enough attention doing that one day. Okay, so we're gonna have to get that rolled about a quarter of a roll. All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here, and in this video, you're, you're going to see Kevin load yet another, well, it ain't straight log. You know, I think one of the important things to remember about mobile milling is not all logs are perfect with no taper and no notch, and they're just the perfect log for you to get the perfect lumber out of. It just doesn't exist, folks. Yeah, sure, you get good logs now and then, but sometimes you get logs like this one. And you know what? The job is to turn this gnarly, crazy, ugly looking log with the big branches off of it and the crotch at the base and to get that and turn that into something that somebody who works with wood could do something with. So Kevin's gonna get this log positioned and then he's gonna start knocking it down. And at the end of this, I'm gonna show you what this stuff looks like. It's pretty neat. Stick around, let's get her done. I gotta take a picture for my knife for him. <laughs> Sorry. If you know someone makes knives, I got at least one broken band. I make knives, but I don't. I actually, uh, I forward welded about six of them together, made a billet, mm -hmm. and I never have done anything with it. Uh -huh. You just caught on the edge of your plant, but it'll hold, I think. I think. <laughs> One way to find out, right? <laughs> that's, uh, that's a gnarly piece. I don't know if I'm going to get past it on this side, though. Uh, if I can make a line spot there. You can do like I do, just run the head down, lift it up all the way down, see if you can get by. And while I'm at it, folks, do me a favor. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of these videos and Kevin's job milling up these crazy logs here in Kennewick for me on his LT40Y. 
drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I really appreciate it. And I answer every comment that someone makes. So I look forward to seeing what you've got to say. Let's get back to it. All right, we're back to milling after that band change. And you know, some of you have mentioned the sound of the band as it mills up these logs and how it, it seems to be howling. And there's been some question about band tension. Kevin does run really heavy band tension. He runs higher than recommended at about 3,500 PSI, as well as questions about his drive belt tension, which he also runs higher at about 17 pounds. Now, Kevin was a millwright for, I believe he said 28 years. And he actually brought that up in a comment recently about some of the things folks have pointed out in this mill. And one thing I've learned about Kevin is Kevin's not afraid to get in and do maintenance on his mill. And I guess you would expect that out of a millwright. So, you know, changing out uh, band wheel bearings for him or anything of that nature just isn't that big of a deal. And he feels that he gets a better cut out of his mill running that higher tension. And he acknowledges that it might mean that he goes through bearings a little more often than say somebody else might. But on the other hand, depending on the quality of the bearings, he might not. So, you know what? This is one of the beauties of going around and seeing other sawyers running these mills because you get to see some of what folks do. Kevin addressed his chain in that he said, you know, in all his years of being a millwright, he learned that sometimes metal things are just, they have a natural state that they want to be in. And he has found that no matter how many times he tightens up his chain, it always ends up right back here. That's an interesting observation. I will tell you that mine tends to run a little bit low as well. I'm, I'm just one that will go and tighten it up a little more often, perhaps. So it works for me, keeps things pretty smooth. I will say that it might be harder on the drive motor to run them tighter than to run them loose like Kevin does. So it's possible he'd get more life out of his. But I do think that that's one of the reasons you see the head kind of jerk a little bit. I think it's because that chain is loose. Now Kevin's mill has quite a bit more hours on it than mine does. He's used it really heavily. He had a couple of years where he milled, I think he said about 800 hours per year. So pretty incredible. And I think you do see some of that in the way he's milling. Some of you have commented on how smooth he is as he operates the mill. I can tell you that the more you run your mill, the smoother things get. You just tend not to forget things. Things become so natural to you that it's just like anything else that somebody does for an extended period. But anyway, enough of my yakking. We're gonna get these last couple slabs off the deck here, and then I'm gonna show you what they look like, so I'll bring it to you.
There we are. Look at that. Now I did tell the customer that he's got some potential gun stock stuff here. Uh, shotgunners particularly really like custom stocks. And I mentioned this to him. I actually milled for somebody, oh, several years ago, that that's one of the things that they did was they made gun stocks. And every cut on some black walnut we were milling, we would stop, brush it off, and he would take a close look at it to see if it had just the right figure that he was looking for in a high quality gun stock. But this stuff is gorgeous stuff. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. I'm going to drop another video right here for you to check out. And don't worry, we got one more video coming up in the Kevin Bales Enterprises, or should I call it Kevin's Sawdust Roadshow series. So more to come. Stick around. Have a great day, folks. The old jar head out.